When NASA's Mars Science Laboratory, or MSL, lands on Mars, the rover will have many ambitious science goals. Named Curiosity, the rover will land in Gale Crater. This is an ideal spot to study the exposed rock that offers us tantalizing clues about Mars' past. One of the 10 science instruments that Curiosity carries is a unique analysis tool called KIMIN, short for Chemistry and Mineralogy. About the size of a large shoebox, this portable laboratory will accurately define the mineral composition of samples taken from the Martian soil and rocks. Join us as we meet the team at NASA Ames Research Center who developed the Kimmen instrument, as well as discover how this technology is proving to be indispensable right here on Earth. Tell us more about one of the instruments on the Mars Science Laboratory. I'm here with NASA geologist David Blake. He's the inventor and principal investigator on the Kimmen instrument. David, can you tell us more about Kimmen and what it will be doing on MSL? Well, Kimmen is an X-ray diffraction instrument, and this is the first time we've ever sent an instrument like that into space. And uh, X-ray diffraction is the gold standard for how to analyze minerals on the Earth in a large laboratory. So for the first time ever, we'll be able to definitively determine uh, what minerals are present in rocks. And by knowing that, we will understand the history of the early Mars environment. Gale Crater is one of the oldest and deepest craters on the surface of Mars, and we believe it has sedimentological records that go back as far as uh, four billion years, billion with a B. And uh, the significance of that is that on the Earth, uh, with plate tectonics, we have no sediments that are that old that we can really look at and interpret. This is really the only way to look at a four billion year old sediment and say how it formed and what the conditions were at that time. How is this different than Spirit and Opportunity that have come before? Well, we're doing something similar to what Spirit and Opportunity has done, but on much, a much larger scale. Uh, Spirit and Opportunity were kind of like field geologists. They would go out with a hand lens and a hammer and, and look at rocks, maybe analyze the surface of a rock. But Mars Science Laboratory goes a step further and we collect those rocks, collect powders, and we have essentially a full up uh, terrestrial laboratory inside the body of Mars Science Laboratory. And that's what's gonna be different. How do you get a laboratory to fit on a rover that's gonna go to another planet? Okay, well, you have to make it small. That's one thing. Uh, small and, and uh, a lot less mass. So uh, a regular diffractometer lab is about like double wide refrigerator sized uh, with lots of complicated motions of the detector, of the sample, and of the source. We kind of had a, a, a a new idea where we actually vibrate the sample with a tuning fork so that the sample itself does all the motions and the, and the machine uh, doesn't have to. So we essentially went from a complicated big machine with many moving parts to a small simple machine with no moving parts. What's the most exciting thing about Kimmen flying on MSL for you? I've been doing diffraction, I've been working in this business for uh, uh, 35 years and so uh, having this kind of come to fruition finally is uh, really exciting to me. To tell us more about this technology, we're meeting with Philippe Sarazin who helped develop the Kimmen instrument. He is now the chief scientist at in situ, a division of Olympus that is commercializing the technology. Philippe, what is X-ray diffraction? Is it similar to regular X-ray imaging techniques? It's actually quite different. Uh, X-ray diffraction is a method for analyzing crystalline materials. Uh, every crystal, every type of crystal, has a very uh, unique signature uh, in X-ray diffraction. Crystals are everywhere around us. They're in uh, geological materials, but they're also in man-made materials such as metals or uh, ceramics or concrete or even pharmaceutical products. So by using our instruments, uh, we can identify the nature of the crystals inside a, inside a sample. I can take an example of you know, two uh, materials that are very much alike but very much different. Uh, two materials made out of 100% of carbon. One is graphite and the other one is diamond. X-ray diffraction can tell the difference between diamond and graphite where traditional chemical analyzers would see carbon. 
Tell us how the Kimmon instrument evolved into a commercially produced product. I used to work with David Blake at NASA, and we developed a number of prototypes uh, to demonstrate the capability of the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the process of doing that, we had a chance to test our instruments in the field. And that was the first time X-ray diffraction was taken out of the lab. Seeing the capability that geologists could use on the site uh, was quite uh, a revelation that there were a number of commercial applications that could derive from that technology. And what types of areas is it being used? So we released our first product in 2007, it's called Terra, mm -hmm. and uh, Terra has been used by a, a number of uh, scientists and engineers in very different fields such as uh, you know, geology obviously, but also you know, the oil industry for oil drilling, mm -hmm. um, in uh, mining, or even in the uh, pharmaceutical industry or, or museums. How is it being used in a museum? And the objective was to have an instrument that could analyze um, surface materials, uh, mostly pigments, in uh, works of art such as paintings and frescoes or sculptures, and non-destructively. Uh, Terra and Kemin are both destructive instruments. You need to sample and grind uh, that sample, uh, which obviously would be a problem when you're analyzing a uh, very expensive and rare you know, work of art. <laughs> And what are some of the more interesting works of art that you've been able to see? So the, that instrument was taken into unique sites such as uh, King Tut's tomb or uh, the Acropolis in, in Athens. And what do you see as the future of the Kimmon technology? What's unique about what we've created for the, this Mars project as well as for the, the commercial spin-off is that there's nothing in the world uh, other than, than what we've developed that allows doing these analyses in the field and almost instantly you get answers within minutes or tens of minutes. Uh, it reopens uh, new horizons for some applications, uh, whether they're scientific or, or industrial. So there's a lot of potential for the, the technique that was developed for Kamen. Thanks for joining us and meet us again on our next Destination Innovation. For more information about the Kimmon instrument, please visit nasa.gov/aims.